From games like We Were Here Forever to Far Cry and Back for Blood, we wanted to make a definitive list of some of the best games that you can play with your friends co-op. My name is Lija and I run Rocket Sloth with my buddy Luke, where we retell our experiences and challenges from our playthroughs of co-op games, like the time we tried to play Halo without shooting or walking, or the time we've taken some of our friends who had never played Destiny before and threw them in a raid with us just to see what would happen. Co-op is kind of our thing, and with new releases you can look forward to coming in 2022 and the catalog of good games that are already playable, what games actually are the best of the best that you should try out with your buddies? We put together a list of our own picks from our own personal experiences of co-op games that you can have a good time with your friends, and we have a good mix of some games that had come out in the past few years that you should pick up and try to games that are on their way a little bit later on in 2022. If you're like us, you might spend a ton of time in front of a monitor or TV because of things like video games or work. And sometimes you might find that your eyes are feeling a bit strained after spending hours on end staring at a screen. The reason for this is that our eyes are likely being overexposed to blue light. Like when we sit all night and stare at our monitor to do things like challenges for videos. And that's where GMG performance eyeglasses come in. They act as a shield against this blue light and help reduce eye strain over long periods of time. As you can see, they even sent us a pair of glasses from their newest generation that just came out this Black Friday. They're really high quality and our eyes actually feel less strained when we wear them. And now with their Black Friday deal, you can get 50% off their newest generation. And this offer ends November 29th at 11.59 p.m. So make sure you check out the link down below so you don't end up missing out. Okay, so the first game we wanted to look at was the Dark Pictures Anthology. If you're looking for a really good story-driven game that you can play with one of your buddies either locally or online, start here because these games are a lot of fun. Currently, there's three games in the series, but a fourth one coming out later on this year. They've been releasing them yearly. These games are like choose-your-own-adventure horror games that follow five different characters where you and your playing partner will have to investigate mysterious areas and make some really difficult decisions decisions that end up impacting the main story and potentially the survival of each individual character. The story writing itself is pretty decent and the overall world that you're exploring is always in each game really creepy and ethereal and the atmosphere that's built up is just a really really cool type of setting to experience in a game like this. Communication is definitely key here and trying to get all five of your characters to survive till the end of the story is a really cool challenge in itself. But also, once you beat the story, you can go back and try different scenarios and see how the story would have shifted if you made different decisions along the way. And that's one of the coolest parts about this game. Man from Medan, the first one in the series, is actually available on Xbox Game Pass, but there's also Little Hope, who stars Eyebrows himself, Will Poulter, and the more recent House of Ashes that stars Ashley Tisdale from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and High School Musical. Now, on the other hand, if you're more into problem solving or some sort of coordination with your teammate, you might really enjoy the We Were Here series, which are now available on console and PC. Currently, there's three We Were Here games that have released, with the fourth game that's going to be releasing in 2022. Now, the cool thing about the We Were Here games is essentially they're kind of like this escape room where you're in this mysterious castle in the Antarctic, but instead of working together to try to progress and move out of the room into the next puzzle, you have to use walkie-talkies to communicate to share the different clues that each each of you have in your own unique rooms separated from each other, as the clues that one player has in their room will be integral for the other player to figure out how to solve their room. Honestly, this game is a lot of fun. If you like the idea of escape rooms or collaboration through communication, this is a really fun game to play. Luke and I started playing this game series when it first started, and it's honestly been a favorite. We go back and we played it on opposite sides, and we're really excited to see what the fourth game has in store. Okay, a few years back, we made a video like this and we talked a little bit about A Way Out, which is a great narrative driven game that follows two characters who are in prison who plan to break out of prison. Now this game is a lot of fun if you're looking for a narrative driven game that also has a little bit of more engaging gameplay tied with it. But this one's cool because it has that online split screen that is always on so you can see what your partner player is doing and what they're experiencing while they can also see what you're experiencing at the same time. But the story itself 
itself is really great, and Hazelight Studios, who made that game, have honestly been doubling down on trying to create and curate really great co-op experiences. And more recently, they released their new game, It Takes Two, which is another great example of a cooperative game utilizing that split-screen approach, and it works really well. Now, in It Takes Two, essentially, two parents who are going through a divorce get turned into these little dolls somehow through the power of magic or something. They have to work together to try to find a way to be turned back into humans and break the curse that they're under. The story itself is actually pretty fun all the way through, and there's a lot of really subtle humor throughout the game, but this game, unlike A Way Out, focuses a bit more on the type of gameplay and how to give players constantly varying experiences through and through. And while at the core, it's a 3D platformer, you not only have to work with your partner to navigate through the levels, fight off bosses, and solve puzzles, but also in each main section of the game, new elements are introduced, keeping the game constantly feeling fresh. Like some moments we're just parkouring and jumping our way through, and other moments we're flying an airplane. It's really cool how this game constantly is throwing different experiences out, and that's something we really liked. Okay, we talked about Far Cry 5 when we did our other co-op video years ago, and it was really cool because not too often do we see a narrative-driven first-person shooter game have some sort of opportunity for cooperative play. But fortunately enough, the Far Cry franchise has shifted into allowing cooperative play in their more recent titles. Far Cry 5, Far Cry New Dawn, and Far Cry 6 all have cooperative cooperative play enabled, so you can play online with a buddy and play through these games. Far Cry 6, the newest entry in the franchise, is an action-adventure shooter, and it's actually one of those games that probably end up playing out much better if you play it alongside a friend. While the other games we've talked about so far have been focused mostly on cooperative experiences and how to have players collaborate together, this game is a bit different because it takes that single-player narrative as the standard and allows two players to play through something like that in the same session, and that's something we don't get to to see too often anymore, and it's still something that is appreciated whenever we get a game that goes that extra mile. So if you're looking for something more in line with a AAA title, this is a great place to look. This kind of is like one of the games that I wouldn't really be too interested in playing by myself, but if I can bring a friend along, you know I'm going to give it a go. Okay, Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 already are classics when it comes to cooperative play. It's four players fighting off against zombies, and there's different types of zombies, and you're just trying to push your way through and get to the next area and there's a lot of varied settings, and the gameplay is really, really just fast-paced and fun. And more recently, a lot of the team who worked on the original Left 4 Dead games branched off, started their own studio, and Back 4 Blood was released in October. And this game does a great job at capturing that feeling of cooperativeness with your squad, but also giving a brand new experience. Of course, this is a brand new world, and gameplay is a little bit different, but the fact that there are different variables and modifiers that change up the gameplay each time you play through does add a little bit of replayability. Along the way, you also collect cards as you're going through, which change out which power-ups you have access to when playing through the main story, and it's a pretty fun game beginning to end to experience. It's actually on Game Pass, so especially if you're a Game Pass member, this is a great opportunity to try out. You're gonna have fun playing through the main story, and there's DLC coming out soon, which will probably add some more stuff to check out and experience along the way. At least, hopefully. Otherwise, what's gonna be in the DLC if it's not you know, more gameplay. Okay, now if you want to try out something a little bit older or more classic, Perfect Dark is a great place to go. It's available as part of Rare Replay on the Xbox, or you could pop off an old Nintendo 64 cartridge if you're really feeling it, though the Xbox version does have online capabilities. But Perfect Dark was an amazing first-person shooter spy game, a lot like the old GoldenEye type game. You play as Joanna Dark in this futuristic cyberpunk-esque world, and she's a spy, and she's doing stuff, and then all of a sudden you think you're playing a spy game and boom there's an alien that you have to save from Area 51 and from there the story just gets real wild and it's fun. It's a little bit dated but it's just a really solid shooter that predates something like Halo. Now I'm bringing this game up on this list because there is a new Perfect Dark game that is in development and it's supposed to be a really big deal apparently. A ton of really experienced developers are on board for the project and that's really exciting and hopefully, fingers crossed, the reboot will have co-op or if you want a somewhat more scuffed experience Experience, you could always play Perfect Dark Zero, which was an Xbox 360 launch title and a prequel to Perfect Dark, and uh, it's fun to play with a friend. It's just 
maybe not as much of a masterpiece as the first Perfect Dark. Okay, a lot of people love the Grand Theft Auto series, and it doesn't look like we're getting Grand Theft Auto 6 anytime in the near future. So if you need to play something different that still kind of feels like Grand Theft Auto, and you want something you can experience with a friend, the Saints Row franchise still is a great franchise to jump into. We strongly recommend playing Saints Row 2, but if you want something a little more modern, a little newer, Saints Row the Third Remastered is a great place to jump into. You don't really have to know too much of the story to dive into this, but Saints Row kind of serves as a parody to Grand Theft Auto, and it has its own gameplay that's solid, and the story is pretty good, but you're really going to appreciate some of the little nods to the competitor franchise that's sprinkled in there, and the story itself is serious at times, but it has so much comedy throughout the whole thing. You're going to have a really good time easily with this. And there's a brand new Saints Row game coming out in 2022 in August. Unfortunately, it was delayed, but still, it's supposed to have co-op and it's going to be a fresh reboot of the franchise. So if you need something new to jump into that you don't want to play a game that's a third in the franchise, you can try out the reboot when that comes out. Okay, Sea of Thieves is a very interesting game because it's very easy to get severely burnt in this game as it is at the end of the day, one of those survival online games that are straight up just a free-for-all. However, get the right group of friends together, get someone maybe in that group who actually knows what they're doing and can teach you, and you can have a really, really good time, and you can get addicted to the gameplay. Sea of Thieves has so much to offer in the sense of the fact that every time you jump into the game, you have a completely different experience, and sometimes you're going to have a great run, and you're going to get a bunch of treasure and be victorious. Maybe you'll fight other ships and other players and win and you're also going to get sunk a lot and lose all of the stuff that you worked for for hours and hours but that experience is kind of part of the charm of it. The fact that you're always looking and always worried about losing your stuff is kind of the fun of the game too. More recently, Sea of Thieves has been getting a ton of massive content updates, like the huge Pirates of the Caribbean crossover that they released earlier in 2021. And these are more narrative experiences where you don't have to worry about other players as much. And in general, there's just so much to actually do in the game now versus when the game initially launched that if you've been away from the franchise for quite some time, it's not a bad idea to jump back into it, especially if you even somewhat liked the gameplay loop back when the game first came out, because the gameplay loop has just been expanded upon and really refined a lot. The game doesn't go on to have no flaws whatsoever, though. There are still problems with hit detection at time that they're apparently working on, and it can be incredibly heartbreaking when you do something right and it comes down to the wire and the game just fails you, like an infinite loading screen when you could have respawned and saved your boat. I know this one all too well, but at the end of the day, I've poured so many hours into this game and I've had some amazing experiences with friends playing on the seven seas. Okay, Halo Infinite, which should be an iconic cooperative game, isn't actually going to be getting co-op until May of 2021. So we can't really recommend it as a co-op game to play, though if you're looking for something to get prepared for the new Halo campaign for when you can play it with your friend, maybe check out the Master Chief Collection, which is now on PC as well as Xbox, of course, and you can play through all of the previous Halo games minus Halo 5 Guardians, which is fine. It's not that fun anyways, but you can team up with one friend on Halo 1 and Halo 2, or if you have a group of friends and the four of you want to play through the campaigns, just jump into Halo 3, ODST, Reach, 4. All of those support four-player co-op, which is a great time. And when Infinite Campaign finally does release, it's supposed to have four-player co-op, so all your friends can just jump over and experience that game too. If you're looking for something more like a looter shooter, Borderlands has always been a classic go-to, all the way from Borderlands 1 through all of the games that came out in between Borderlands 2, Borderlands the pre-sequel, and Borderlands 3, which more recently came out. But there is a new spin-off game coming out called Tiny Tina's Wonderland, which is a spin-off of a Borderlands 2 DLC that was incredibly popular. So if you want that shooter experience, but in a more fantastical setting, Maybe this is the one for you. Okay, then there's a lot of action role-playing games that do have co-op features as well, and this is a genre I'm still newer to getting into, but I've had some fun with these games already a little bit. But the Diablo series, both Diablo 2, which is now remastered, and Diablo 3 are very popular for the accessibility in letting co-op players just play together in a pretty easy and straightforward way. Minecraft Dungeons is actually another co-op action role-playing game that you can play with your friends as well, and they're doing a pretty massive overhaul 
overhaul to the way that Minecraft Dungeons works, which looks pretty exciting and pretty game-changing for itself as a platform. So it'll be really interesting to see what they end up doing with that. Or if you want to go down the throwback route, you can just play a game of Minecraft, and that's fun also. Either play some mini games or just chill in a fresh world and start punching some trees. Ubisoft actually has a couple of interesting games that are coming out that will be cool to see how they play when you're with your friends. For instance, The Division Heartland is set to release later in 2022, which will be a free-to-play Division game. So it'll be really interesting to see how this game ends up working and what's different from this game from, say, The Division 2. And also Rainbow Six Extraction, which is a survival co-op game that puts three players together, fighting off the these creepy looking parasites. It might be really fun. Also, of course, there is regular Rainbow Six Siege, which you could play with your friends. Though Rainbow Six can get very toxic, and there's a really steep learning curve. But if you're down for something tactical, it can be a really good time with the right team. Definitely not random queue. Oh, well, whatever. Throw yourself in random queue, too. Call of Duty is known for having some interesting campaigns with each yearly release, though not too many campaigns are actually co-op. Call of Duty World at War and Call of Duty Black Ops 3 are two games that do support co-op play, which is always cool to see something a little bit different. Or you can just jump in some zombies and have a great time with that. Black Ops 3 seems to be kind of the peak when it comes to how fans have perceived zombie mode with the Zombies Chronicles DLC. So if you're looking for an ultimate zombies experience, that's not a bad place to go. If you're looking for something a little more real-time and strategic, The Escapists 2 actually isn't that bad. Luke and I spent some time trying to find our way through it, and it is deep. There's way more depth to this game than we had ever thought, and because of that we were maybe a little overwhelmed, but for the time that we were trying to figure out how to break out of prison, we had a pretty good time. Castle Crashers is a classic, but still a goodie, and it's available on a lot of platforms nowadays. You just go into this hack and slash beat em up co-op RPG adventure. It's honestly a good time. It's lighthearted and fun, but I don't think anyone's jumped into Castle Crashers and was like, man, I can't stand playing this game with my friends. There's a lot of really classic co-op games that came out years ago, like Portal 2, which is still known for being the pinnacle of co-op puzzle games all these years later. And it's always fun to jump back and try it out, especially if you're on PC, because you can play workshop maps very easily. And those puzzles can be just as fun and a fresh experience that are more advanced than what the base game offers. The Gears of War franchise is another franchise that has been known for its co-op over the years, especially with the newer games supporting more players for co-op, which is cool. Gears of War 4 and 5 are one of the few games that actually have five player co-op enabled. And then there's a Gears of War 1 remaster that you can play with one other friend online, or you could go check out and play through all the Gears of War games that are available on Game Pass. Also, if you're a fan of Gears of War Judgment from that franchise, you might really like Outriders, which is a newer game that released, and it kind of fuses the feeling of Gears of War and maybe Destiny together. And it's a three player co-op game, so you can play through the story and everything with your friends, and it's a pretty good time especially if you're looking for a third-person shooter, specifically. Otherwise, there's probably other games in different genres you might be able to enjoy a little bit better. More recently, we've seen a lot of games blow up in popularity that allow cooperative play in this survival looter type genre, like Escape from Tarkov, Vigor, or even Hunt Showdown. All of these games share similar elements, though Tarkov seems to be the most popular one. If you only can play Vigor, though, on a console, it's not the worst experience, and you still can kind of get a little sense of the experience, but in a different way. Grand Theft Auto V still is a great game to jump into if you're looking for some good old heists to run with the buddies, or you can play Red Dead Redemption 2 and play poker. That's cool. Or you could take it a step further and you could play Four Kings Casino, which is a casino simulation game. It's free to play, though they're gonna try to get you to buy in-game currency. But if you wanna just play with the free coins that they give you right away, you can play poker, bingo, you can play the roulette wheel and waste all of your currency that way. It's, it's, it's fun for a little while if you're looking for something just to do one night. You can always just party in the club when you run out of money. That works too, but you'll likely lose all your money in the slots. Honestly, Battle Royale games seem to get a lot of flack nowadays just because of how insanely popular they were for a while, and now they're just kind of a normal service that exists. But you can have a lot of fun with some friends in the right BR. It's just kind of picking the one that fits your friend group the best. Call of Duty's Warzone is getting the Pacific update, which will change things up a little bit, and Fortnite is expected to get a Chapter 3, while games like PUBG and Apex still exist. A lot of fans have also jumped 
jumped back into just playing some good old Titanfall 2 if you're looking for some online games to jump in and play. But one really underrated genre when it comes to co-op games definitely is the meme genre because there's a lot of really fun games that can just give you a really funny and hilarious night and those shouldn't be underrated or disregarded either, like Roblox. You can jump on, play some really dumb games, and have a good laugh with some friends. I know it sounds like a crazy game, but seriously, you can have some very memorable experiences if you have the right friend group. Or if you need something else, you can jump on VR chat. Or if you don't have the VR set up, you can do Rec Room and just see what happens there. Golf with your friends can lead to some very, very high levels of toxicity, surprisingly. But it's also a pretty solid mini golf game if you're looking for something like that. Or if you're looking for more of a party game experience like Mario Party, but you don't have a Nintendo console, check out Pummel Party on Steam and it's going to be coming to Xbox later on but it gets updates regularly which is really cool but if you want another thing that does tie more heavily into the co-op side of things you might really really enjoy humans fall flat this game is just a really fun platformer puzzle that you can play with your friends the physics are wonky it's hilarious but also very team oriented surprisingly you can play it solo but it's definitely one of those games that's much better with friends okay those are our 50 plus picks for the best games to play co-op with your friends if we missed a game that you thought we should have included here definitely leave it in the comments down below so other people can see more recommendations and if you like the way that we talk about games and you want to see our experiences playing games co-op and kind of our retelling of these things in a very very dry and sarcastic way. Maybe subscribe to Rocket Sloth for more videos like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.